In this math talk, we're specifically going to talk about integer numbers, or sometimes we like to call them integers. Now, I'm not going to give you the background on where those numbers sit amongst the other number systems, amongst the wholes and the naturals and the rational numbers and the real numbers. That was done in an earlier video. So if you'd like to know where they fit in, I suggest you go back to one of the foundational videos that you can find in this strand. Now, at this point, I will just say that integers, as we like to call them, are signed numbers. So numbers such as negative 32, negative 6, positive 15, positive 80. And I would say to you, they're one of our most useful type of numbers. They are clean numbers without trailing decimals. So what I, you might call a complete number or negative and positive whole numbers, entire numbers. And it would be pretty unusual for you to open up a newspaper on any given day and not see negatives and positives, either if you look in the business section or you look in the sports section or, say, the weather. Um, you're going to see an awful lot of positives and negatives. So, for example, we might report a temperature as negative 32 degrees Celsius, or we might report a golf score of 80 or being 15 over par, plus 15. Or a company might report a, a, a quarterly loss of negative 6 or 6%. When I talk about positive integers, I'm talking about numbers like this. Positive 13, positive 129, 4. And that highlights a very important point. If I don't write a sign in front of a number, if I don't write the positive sign in front of that 4, it is still understood to be positive 4. So when we see a standalone 7 or 23... We understand that to be positive 7 or positive 23. 3 to the exponent 5 is 243. All of those numbers that you see there are positive. Now, when we're thinking about words that we connect with positive integers in our word problems, the words that tend to come up are words like gain or increase or up or greater. Those are all common words that come up in our problems, and we associate them with positive integers. Conversely, we have negative integers, and those numbers look like negative 13, negative 129, negative 4. Negative 3 raised to the exponent positive 5 is negative 243. In every case where you see a negative sign, that is a negative integer. Any negative integer must have that negative sign in front of it. So the 5, that exponent 5 on the negative 3, is not a negative integer. It's a positive integer. We said just a moment ago that a number without a sign in front of it is understood to be positive. So the only positive number that you see there is 5. And the words we associate with that, with the negative integers, are loss, decrease down, or less. So when we see those words in word problems, we're thinking negative integers. Anytime there's a loss or a decrease, and this highlights to me one very, very important point about integers. Integers suggest change. Anytime we have a word problem that involves change, we use integers to represent those changes. Now let's look at some ways that we could visualize integers, and we'll do some basic arithmetic, not too much, um, because I'm going to save most of that for other videos. Now, a common way to represent integers visually is with arrows. And so here I have the integer positive 5, and I have the number line laid out in front of me with the positive numbers stretching out to the right and the negatives stretching out to the left. If we want to represent positive 5, we draw a line starting at 0 and stretching out to 5. In other words, 5 units to the right of 0. And so I'll just draw a little arrowhead on the end of that and a dot at the beginning, and I will call that positive 5. And you'll see how useful this becomes when we start putting integers together. So that is my visual representation of positive 5 as an integer. It's measured with its tail at 0 and its tip at the 5, or the positive 5 on our number line. So let's try another. So let's consider negative 9. I do it the same way. I start my line at 0 and extend it to the left until I reach the value negative 9. And so I'll put an arrowhead at this end where I finish and just a dot where I started at the beginning. And that would be how I would represent the integer negative 9. Now what I'd like to do is try and put the 2 together. 
And this is what I mean by basic arithmetic. And it's going to look like this. So I would like to see if I can calculate or figure out what happens when we take a positive 5 and to it we add negative 9. Well, it's going to look something like this. I'm going to go back to drawing my arrows. And so I'll draw the positive 5 arrow again. So I'll draw that. And I'll just put on my arrowhead like this. And that represents my positive 5. Now, from that point, I'm going to take my negative integer, my negative 9, and I'm going to start that integer, or that arrow, that line, where I finished off with my positive 5. So I will start it here and extend it nine jumps to the left. So that's nine steps to the left. And so I have this. I have this representing negative nine. So the question is, what do I have here? What do I have as a result? What does it mean to take a positive five and add to it a negative nine? Well, you can imagine almost walking along the arrows. So if you started at 0 and you walked along positive 5, so that would be 5 units to the right, and then at that point walked 9 units to the left, it would amount to having started at 0 and just walked to the left to here. In other words, if I were, let's say, watching you walk this, and before you started walking, I closed my eyes, and after you finished walking, I opened my eyes, I would see, really, that you had started at the tail of the green arrow and finished at the tip of the green arrow. And so we would represent that as negative 4. In other words, that is the equivalent value, or the equivalent of a positive 5 added to a negative 9. So if we were to evaluate this, we'd say that this is equivalent to negative 4. So this is a visual way that we can do our mathematics, and it's pretty clear that a positive 5 added to a negative 9 is the same value as a negative 4. Thanks for watching.